Hi. This week we had so much bad weather related to the fires in Canada. Uh, in Northeast PA, the, the smoke was so heavy for several days, I didn't want to work in my barn. So I tried to think of something I could do in the house. Um, so I decided that I would refinish my little white cane rocking chair. Um, cane and bamboo and wicker never really seemed to go out of style which is nice, they just kind of change up the colors a little bit and uh, a little bit of where they use it um, from outdoor furniture to rocking chairs like I have to little kitchen chairs and even dining rooms now. Um, so you'll find it in a lot of different places and I've been looking on anthropology because sometimes I just like to go through that website and it gives me some ideas, especially with the furniture. Um, they have a lot of really colorful furniture here and nothing happened to it. Anyway, the rocking chair was in good condition. I needed a place to work and something to work on and so I did this little hack. So I hope you enjoy the video and I want to thank you for watching. I'm looking at a bee out there. <laughs> All right, let's do it. For this piece I'm going to do the entire thing over in tobacco brown which is a melange one paint and with trims and coffee bean, a Dixie Belle paint. I have some artist brushes. I have some wipes, those are handy. A little glass of water to clean my brushes. I change that frequently in a paper towel. I'm going to start off typically with a light coat of the Tobacco Road. The base color ends up looking like the natural finish of the cane um, and bamboo that it was originally. It's really funny how that happened. This week in Pennsylvania, we had to deal with all that smoke from Canada wildfires. And that's why I didn't work in my barn this week. I actually started working up there um, with a little bit of help that I had. And we started rearranging the barn so that I could make it a more workable space for me and to put arrange some of my furniture that's all finished um, in a way that people can easily come in and just kind of browse through. But it got so terrible here, I couldn't work out in the barn because I have to keep the doors open when I'm sweeping and all that and cleaning up and I didn't want to work out there, it was so bad. So that's why I decided to repaint this rocking chair and I had had a few different ideas for a while that's usually what happens to me is I'll be looking at something and this little idea will creep into my mind and um, eventually I'll, I'll give in to it and just try to refinish whatever I'm thinking about it's so uncomfortable though to work in my living room. It's incredible. Um, I have to squat down on the floor and sit on boxes to get to the right height, 
My hand was never in the right position when I was painting. And I ended up having to use some really tiny artist brushes to get more detail with the um, alternate color, the coffee bean. And it was literally backbreaking. Now you can see that the original piece of furniture had some distressing little holes that were put in and just different little dings and dents that were the fashion when this was made. And I have no intention of filling it in and making it all smooth. I just think it's just as nice to leave it the way it is and enjoy the distressing. It's not something I would do, but um, it was in style. I, I can't even tell you how old this is. Um, I want to say my mom had it. Um, she bought it new and probably like somewhere in the years like 2000 or so. So it's, you know, it's vintage, it's pretty old, but it's actually in really good condition. Nothing really wrong with it. Um, it was something that I wanted to paint before. I painted it the off-white, that cream color, and I really do like that, but I just wanted a change. And I was looking through Anthropology's website, which I do once in a while. I, I actually like them. I wouldn't purchase trendy things from anthropology as far as their furniture but I do like to go there and get ideas on modern furniture and what's going on with it so that's why I got the idea to actually do some detailing um, in different colors they have um, they don't do the detailing that I did it's more um, it's more subtle where the wrapping around the edges of the frame are a different color but I figured well you know I don't have anything else to do this week so <laughs> I think I'll paint all the cane details the tiny details in a, um, a darker color and that will be cute and wow you can see that I'm using a, a larger kind of fluffy brush which is sort of good but then I have to go in and repaint the tobacco brown the lighter color with a detail brush and then I had to paint the coffee bean again with a detail brush there was just a lot of painting and I won't do this again for a while because it's really not that much fun I like detail painting but I need to be comfortable while I'm doing it I had to get boxes and stools and you know, maybe I should have brought over one of my rolling things from the barn, but I just, I hate going up there and dragging stuff out and dragging it down here and then dragging it back again. So, it's stupid, I know. I should have done it, but you can see how light the coffee bean is on the right um, wrapping, the top right. So, I needed to do, oh goodness, five, six coats of the coffee bean. 
by the time I was finished with it. I'm sorry I'm getting in the frame here. So now I'm down to the detail brush. So I'm switching back and forth from the coffee bean to the tobacco brown because every time you paint one, you make a little mark with the other paint on the part that you're painting that you didn't want. Um, so at least that's what I did. I just, it was very hard to get into that detail. Um, so that's why I had to keep going over it as well, is to keep filling in the spots that I'm messing up. You can see that the top, though, on the top left is starting to look very uniform and much nicer. Now the paint has to be really watered down somewhat so that it will seep between the strapping and the cane and when you have to water the paint down then of course it takes that many more coats of paint to get the finish that you want. I am also using just a tiny bit of water with the Melange 1 paint as well you don't really need any water and it's not recommended to use water but I, I still needed to add just a little bit just to make the paint more um, so that the paint would flow a little bit better so if I had imagined painting all these details with an artist brush I probably would have chosen not to do it it's too late now.
I would have preferred to use a spray finish, but I'm in the house, so I'm not going to do that. Now, I thought about carrying it outside. It's not that it's heavy, but this thing dings so easily. I was afraid I would hit it against something carrying it out. And so I opted to use the general finishes, which I love. I just think that a spray finish would have been the best choice for this piece. This brown wax in the uh, details definitely took it to the next level. It, it looks really beautiful, and I only did it in selective places. I did it around the border of the seat, um, at the top, and at the arms. It just looks so very pretty. So, would I do it again? Mm, not like I did it this time. If I did it again, like I said in the beginning, uh, in the intro, I would spray paint it all one color and get all the cracks and crevices. I think I would actually do even a clear coat over that so that it just stays where it is. And then I would do the details. The details take hours and hours and hours to do. And I can give you a few close-up pictures. There are spots where um, the paint literally pops off. And I've finished it with the general finishes, which isn't a, a hugely um, sturdy finish. It's sturdy enough, but it, it won't take the abuse that, say, you know, a, um, a polyurethane would. So um, I think what I would do is I would use a really heavy um, clear coat on it before I did the details. And the kind of finishes I would do are the ones that are sprayed. I think that makes all the difference. Um, I didn't even dare to buff out the wax because just using my paintbrush, you know how you bang the edge of your paintbrush against your work? It was nicking the paint off. And even though I went and touched up all these um, dark brown, the coffee bean areas, it, the paint is just popping off. I don't know where it's going. It's just not there the next time I look at it. Um, great paints. Melange one, which uh, I've never had fail on me until now. And the um, Dixie Belle chalk paint in Coffee Bean I've used, like, uh, I can't even tell you how many times. And um, it's really good paint. Um, general finishes, a good finish. Howard's wax. I'm going to wait until this dries before I touch it. So I'm not even going to sit on it. Uh, we're going to wait for the wax to dry. I'm going to let it cure 30 days before I use it. My kitty cat might use it. You know, I did a little bit of um, brown wax details, which I really like. I love the way it looks. I really love the way it looks, but I'm fussy about 
my coverage and I would have wanted it to have a better coverage to feel really satisfied. I couldn't sell this to anybody. I wouldn't, you know, so if you're going to take this on as a customer piece, think about that um, because the bamboo typically doesn't hold paint. I don't know why it held the first paint. I wish I could remember what the first paint was. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I wish you all good and beautiful things. Take care.